Hey guys, CJ here from Elevated Systems. Now, when we talk about PC cases, striking that sweet spot between cost and features is often a tall order. But today, I've got something on hand that might just flip the script. Meet the CH560 Digital by Deepcool. Stick around to the end and you might just find yourself pondering, is this the standout value case of the year? Let's get started. It's the money. The Deepcool CH560 Digital measures in at 458 millimeters in length, 230 millimeters in width, and 471 millimeters in height. It's compatible with mini ITX, micro ATX, ATX, and ETX motherboards. It can house CPU tower coolers up to 175 millimeters, graphics card as long as 380 millimeters without a radiator, or up to 350 millimeters with a radiator. It accommodates ATX power supplies up to 170 millimeters. The CH560 is equipped with three 140mm ARGB fans at the front for intake and one 120mm ARGB fan at the rear for exhaust. Additionally, you can fit either three 120mm or two 140mm fans on the top. Radiator support is impressive, allowing for a 360mm front or top mounted radiator and a 120mm rear mounted one. There are removable dust filters on the top and bottom. The front panel integrates a non-removable mesh filter. You get seven replaceable bridgeless PCIe covers. Storage-wise, there's a removable drive sled at the base, accommodating either one two and a half inch SSD and one three and a half inch hard drive or two hard drives. Plus, there's two quick SSD mounting locations. Cable management is tidy with over two centimeters of space velcro straps and ample tie down points the case also includes a sata powered argb hub the front io includes a power button a 10 gigabit per second usb type c port a headset jack a 5 gigabit per second usb type a port and an led selection button some unique features include the adjustable two position graphics card support bracket the front panel showcases deep cool's signature square perforation design which is carried throughout the entire case ensuring optimal airflow aesthetically the case sports a tempered glass and mesh hybrid side panel and for the tech enthusiast the ch560 digital comes with an lcd real-time dual status digital display at the time of filming, the Deepcool CH560 Digital launched with an MSRP of $129 US. In addition to the case, Deepcool also sent over their new AK500 Digital and AK620 Digital CPU air coolers. While I won't be diving deep into a review of these coolers, it's worth noting that they're essentially identical in performance to their AK500 and AK620 Dark counterparts. The standout feature is these digital versions come with a sleek LCD screen that showcases CPU temperature and usage. I've chosen the AK620 as the go-to test cooler for this and all future case reviews. And here's some exciting news. I'll be giving away the AK500 to one lucky viewer, so stay tuned for details on that. With the specifications and features covered, it's time to delve into the build notes. For those opting for a standard ATX build, the process should be straightforward. The case offers ample room and pass-throughs at both the bottom and top for all the necessary connections. A nice extra are these grommeted pass-throughs at the front of the motherboard. However, for those installing an extended ATX board, these pass-throughs will be blocked, necessitating some creative cable management. The case comfortably accommodated the 162 millimeter tall CPU cooler and has space for even the most extended graphics cards. The largest RTX 4090 models might pose a challenge when using a front mounted radiator. Such cards would also have a mere 15 to 16 millimeters of clearance for the PCIe power cables. The spacious interior is due to the fans being mounted externally behind the rear panel. A removable fan bracket enhances this design, making the installation of fans, radiators, or AIOs more straightforward. There's sufficient room to add a second set of fans inside in a push-pull configuration. Also note that while you can fit three 140 mil fans in the front of the case, due to the extra vertical length of the end tanks, a 420 millimeter radiator will not fit. A 360 millimeter radiator fits on the top of the case, but it's not possible to have both a front and top mounted 360 mil rad at the same time. Installing a top all-in-one cooler meant having to remove the rear fan, 
but it was possible to reinstall it afterward. However, with a 55 millimeter thick all-in-one cooler, the rear fan barely fits at its lowest mounting point. So a thick boy like an Arctic liquid freezer tube would negate the rear fan. My 38 millimeter tall ram slightly protruded past the edge of the AIO, leaving about 7.5 millimeters of clearance. So if the cooler exceeds 62.5 millimeters thick, low profile memory is necessary. A top mounted AIO also means the motherboard VRM heatsink needs to be under 50 millimeters. Other than that, everything else should fit with no issues. The specs say PSUs are limited to 170 millimeters. However, if you don't need the drive cage, it can be removed, opening up space for massively long power supplies. Cable management was a breeze. Deep cool included a ton of zip ties and even some extra Velcro straps. However, with over 20 millimeters of space, I took approximately three minutes and just stuffed and strapped everything into the one channel. Despite the mass of cables and wires, the rear panel installed with plenty of room to spare. The one criticism I have here is that the daisy chainable fan and RGB cables were a bit short. Luckily, there are included extension cables for both, so I was just able to connect them to my motherboard. However, being able to strap them into the channel also would have been nice. Overall, building in the deep cool CH560 digital was a positive experience without any major challenges. Just as crucial as the build experience is the performance, in this case certainly delivered. I benchmarked the test system, you'll find the full component list in the description below, in the case against its performance on an open air test bench. The results from an average of three ADA64 stress tests were impressive. The CPU temperature dropped by one degree inside the case. The motherboard temperature decreased by 7 degrees, while the GPU temperature during a 20 minute port royal loop saw only a minor increase of just a degree. This exceptional cooling can be attributed to the extremely open front panel and the trio of 140mm fans, which provided substantial airflow to the internal components. The ventilated PSU shroud and hybrid mesh side panel also play a role, ensuring the graphics card receives an ample supply of fresh cool air. And despite all the openness and high airflow, the case is surprisingly quiet. In fact, during this entire video, Starfield has been running on the PC, and if I cut to just raw audio here, you can see the noise levels are extremely low. Low temperatures and minimal noise are just the tip of the iceberg with this case. One of its standout attributes is the plethora of extra features you get, especially considering the price point. The case boasts four included ARGB fans, a GPU support bracket, grommeted pass-throughs, and an RGB hub eliminating the need to tangle with RGB software if you're not inclined. Add to that the magnetically attached hybrid side panel, often overlooked features like replaceable and bridgeless PCI expansion covers and slots designed for easy use with a universal vertical PCI mounting bracket. But the featured featured the real time dual status digital display. Such status displays are becoming a hot trend in PC cases and Deepcool has crafted a straightforward yet effective solution. This display employs a basic seven cell LCD to showcase both CPU and GPU temperature and usage. It connects via a single USB 2.0 motherboard connection and is powered by a lightweight background app that doesn't drain system resources. This app offers basic controls allowing users to display temperature usage or cycle between the two. The same software also powers the digital CPU cooler displays. And here's the kicker, because it utilizes a simple LCD, it's priced only $20 more than the non-digital CH560 case. Compare that to the optional thermal take display for the Series 300 case I reviewed last month, which comes in with a hefty $100 price tag. Of course, the principles of economics suggest that with so many added features and at such an affordable price, there must be cost-saving measures in place, and there are. The most noticeable drawback of this case is undoubtedly its build quality and materials. 
Deepcool has opted for thinner mild steel, likely around 24 gauge to cut costs. There are also a few build quality issues to note. For instance, the bottom thumb screw on the right side panel doesn't align with its hole. And I also managed to chip the powder coating on the edge of the front panel with just a light accidental tap from a metal ruler doing my review. Now, this is subjective, of course. For someone like me who's frequently tinkering, disassembling, and swapping out parts, a sturdier case is preferable. However, I've been reminded by viewers in the past that when I've criticized the material quality of a PC case, many users set up their PC and then leave it untouched until it's time for a new build. Weighing up everything, I believe the advantages of the CH560 Digital certainly overshadow its shortcomings. All right, let's wrap this up quickly. The deep cool CH560 Digital is where innovation meets value. Packed with features for both newbies and pros, it stands out in the crowd. The real-time dual digital status display is not just a fancy addition, it's a game changer at this price point. Yes, there are some build quality trade-offs, but considering the price and the features on offer, it's an acceptable compromise. The CH560 Digital showcases how tech can be both innovative and affordable. In short, if you want a feature-rich, value-driven PC case, the CH560 Digital should be on your radar. Thanks for joining me, but before I sign off, let me tell you how you can win this AK500 Digital Cooler. YouTube is a little sketchy when it comes to contest links, so just head over to any of my other socials, Instagram, Threads, or formerly known as Twitter, and check the post there for instructions and a link. Simple. And of course, don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next one.